Hi. Good morning. Welcome to day two of Dreamforce. Uh, this is getting started with Git on Salesforce. Uh, it's, it's geared towards developers who either have not used version control before or are just getting started with version control. Um, my name is Taylor Kingsbury. I am a senior application developer at Salient Consulting. And I'm Uriel Gutierrez. I'm an application developer at Salient Consulting. Um, recently, uh, this year, I got my Platform Developer 2 certification. But before that, I was actually a math instructor at Drexel University. I taught calculus for about seven years. Five years ago, I made the switch to working with Salesforce. I've been doing it ever since. And my mantra is always, you don't need a computer science degree to be a developer. Uh, I did not go to school for calculus. I went for computer science. So <laughs> I actually, prior to working at Salient and with Salesforce, I worked for a PHP development company working in PHP and web applications. And at Salient, I still do some PHP development, but it's predominantly Salesforce now. And I've been working with Salesforce a little, about two years, a little over two years. So as, as Uriel said, we are... We're at Salient Consulting. We specialize in Apex, Visual Force, Lightning Development, with a focus on customer relationships. We have offices in Philadelphia, Chicago, Houston, and right here in San Francisco. So um, please make your purchasing decisions on what is currently available at Salesforce. And uh, so how many people are currently using Git? Show of hands. All right, if you're not, that's fine. This is the place where you need to be right now. And to start off, we're not experts by any means necessary. So <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> so um, what is Git? It's the most popular version control system currently available. Uh, it allows for coordination among multiple developers. And it uses the terminal. But you can also use a GUI. For this session, we're going to focus on using the terminal and the reason is, if you focus on a GUI, you're somewhat locked into using that GUI. Uh, maybe you use source tree. But um, if you learn just a few commands on the command line, you can use that anywhere. So we're going to be focusing on the few key commands in the terminal. Um, so it stores previous versions of your code. It's sort of like a snapshot tool. If you need to see the way your code looked previously, you can store it using Git, and you can always revert back to the way your code used to look. Um, it removes reliance on sandboxes as the source of truth. If you're using a sandbox as the only place where you're storing your code, sandboxes can change, right? They can be refreshed. They can be edited by either an admin or a developer. If you use Git, you'll be able to take a stable version of your working code and store it away where no one's going to be able to touch it. And if you need to go back to it or reference it, you can do that. Um, has, anyone ever, has anyone ever written some code in a sandbox and then had another developer overwrite that code? Show of hands, anybody? Show of hands. So everyone who's not raising their hands, you're the ones overwriting the code. So you better watch out for them. Yeah, so I can't count how many times I've overridden Taylor's code and gotten an earful from Taylor, so I'm very sorry. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay, because even if that happens, if you're using Git, you have a backup plan, because you have the version of your code as it was when you saved it. So code can get overwritten, right? It can happen, especially if two people are working in the same sandbox. But if you use Git and commit your code, you'll at least be able to figure out, OK, maybe I can mix and match, figure out what this class is supposed to look like or what it looked like previously. Um, it does not have to be just Salesforce. If you're building an Angular app, you can still use Git. And that's another reason we want to focus on the command line, because you're going to be able to use these skills not just with Salesforce projects, but any coding project that you work on. Um, it allows backtracking if you have unnecessary changes, unwanted changes. Maybe I put a SQL statement inside a loop. If I do that, I can revert back to my stable version of my code. Um, also, more importantly, if I want to do some refactoring, it allows me to know that 
if I do that refactoring, I can go back to the way it was. So that gives you more confidence in being able to refactor. So if I want to move some code around, maybe put it in another class, I have my previous version, so I'm not worried about it. Has anyone ever worked in an org where some functions are commented out and it's just sitting there in the org for a long time? If you're using Git, you can just delete those comments. Get rid of them, because they're because that function, as it is, is being stored in Git. Um, also, it allows you to pinpoint where errors are. If, you're, if you find an error, you can look at your commit history and see, OK, this is the first place I'm going to look for where that error might be, because it's the most recently changed files that I'm looking at. Um, you will need a text editor to start using Git. For this demo, we're going to be using VS Code combined with Maven's Mate. We also recommend IntelliJ with Illuminated Cloud. Um, any Windows users? My people? Uh, <laughs> Taylor, I don't think there's as many as the Mac users, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Windows users, you're going to have to install uh, Git for Windows because the, the command line isn't going to work <laughs> right out of the box. <laughs> so if you're on Windows, follow this link. Install Git for Windows. <laughs> and also, you'll be needing, obviously, a, a Salesforce org. It could be a sandbox or a develop org. Either one is fine. You can do it on production, but definitely not recommended to stay away from production. Uh, you'll need a GitHub account to store your repository, to have your repository ready to go, and then access to the terminal or console or the PowerShell, whatever you want to call it. OK, let's start getting into some commands. Uh, so some quick commands to get into your project folder using the command line. You have uh, the cd command, which just changes directories from the command line. If you if you're in a directory and you want to go back to a previous directory, you want to use the cd dot dot command. And in a directory, you could see all the files using the ls command, and including any hidden ones using the ls dash a command, which these hidden files include the dot git ignore file, which we'll get into a little bit later. So just a quick little thing about repositories. You're going to have two repositories. One is the local repository, which is stored on your machine on your laptop, your desktop, whatever the case is, that's where all the code is going to be stored. Then you have your remote repository, which is usually external. Uh, it's in the cloud. And you can access it through SSH or website HTTP. And for our demo today, we'll be using GitHub as our repositor remote repository to push in our local repository up to the cloud. <laughs> OK, now let's start getting into Git. So. When you start using Git, you'll pretty much use these five commands pretty much all the time. You'll have them memorized in a flash. So you'll always start off using the git init command, which initializes your repository. It's empty, but it's good to go, ready to go. So once you start making changes to the files or you add new files to your code, then you want to use the git status command to see which files changed or which files were added. Uh, after you make changes, and you like the changes that you want to commit to your repository, you want to use the git add dash dash all command. Or you could also use the git add uh, period command. They both do the same thing. Uh, I don't know why there's two, for that matter. Uh, so after they're all staged, ready to go, you're ready to commit. So you use the git commit dash m command with uh, what I like to call a meaningful message, meaning you could put whatever you want, but if I'm going to look at it and it just says hello, I mean, I don't know what this is going to do when I commit it or if I merge it in. So it usually should be a meaningful message to let the person who's going to look at it know what the purpose of this commit is. And finally, once all these are committed, you want to push them up to the cloud using the git push command. <clears throat> uh, so we'll be doing a demo with branching today. And just some really good guidelines that should be followed. You want to always pull the newest changes from the repo, because if you don't, then you have some other stuff that happens. So always get the newest changes. And they're not always going to be yours. They could be from any developer working on the same repository. After you got the newest changes, you want to check out a new branch using the git checkout dash b command with the branch name. And then after you make your changes, you commit, you stage them, you commit them you're ready to push up to the branch in the remote repository. Uh, so just a quick little infographic. Not going to take too much time on this. You can see here, this is pretty much a use case for using Git. So you have your main branch, which is the develop branch. 
and two features that a user created. One has three commits and is just hanging there. It's not into the develop branch just yet. But the second feature also has three commits and is merged into develop. So that's ready to go and pushed up to the cloud, and it's ready to be used. Uh, so we're saving a little bit of time by not creating the repository, but pretty much this is what you'll see when you create the repository. You'll see just all you have to do is insert a uh, repository name and optionally add the force.com ignore file, which is basically just saying a file that says ignore any configurations that my editor is adding in for me. Hmm. All right. Make some all right. So we're going to go into the demo. Um, Again, we're, we're not going to create the repository right away. Um, we're going to start with an existing repository. This is just for time purposes. Um, so we're on the develop branch. And the first thing we want to do is pull in the changes um, that are from any, any, other, any other developers working on this branch. So we, we do a git pull. And it looks like we're up to date. So um, now we want to create a new branch off of develop where we're going to make changes to our class. So um, use feature as the beginning of the name of the demo, or the branch. And, uh, and we're going to create that new branch. It puts us on that branch now. And we're ready to um, actually edit our file. Um, it doesn't matter what changes we're making. Uh, we use the simplest example possible, the Hello World class. We just want to be able to make a change and show what you need to do if changes are made. So um, we're just going to change the debug, debug statement. And we're going to save that to Salesforce. So this is where most of the time you would, you would stop if you weren't using version control. Because now it's saved to your sandbox, right? But um, what we want to do next is actually not just have it be stored in the sandbox, because our source of truth is now our local repository. That's, that's on your machine, your Git repository. So, um, the process we're going to go through is, is to um, look for it, what changes have been made to, our, to any of our files. And if we do get status, we see there's been one change, right? The Hello World class is now different. And it shows up in red, indicating that the file has changed. So um, all right, we have our change. Now we're going to stage that, which means we're getting ready to commit it to our local repository. So we're going to add the file. And we're going to add all changes. Uh, you may be more specific which, 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 cha which changes you want to add. But um, we're gonna, it's going to add all of them, because we only have one file. And we're going to see um, the status is now in green. That means it's staged. So now we're going to put it into our local repository on our own machine. So um, the dash m allows you to skip the vim editor when you're writing a commit message, just write dash m. And then you can put your comment there, make it a useful comment. And that is putting our file into our local yep. repository. So that's on our machine, but it's not on the web yet. It's not in GitHub. So we're going to push to GitHub to our remote repository. And so we're using git push origin. If you see the word origin, that just means GitHub. It's your remote repository. So that's where we're putting our changes. We're putting them onto the cloud. And um, we push those changes. So um, now those changes are in GitHub on our feature branch. And we're going to go back to our develop branch in order to uh, merge those changes back in. So Uriel's going to do a git, uh, git pull to see if there's any recent changes. And then we're going to merge our feature branch back into our develop branch so that all our changes are on our develop branch. And that has our most up-to-date code. Cool. We're good. So now we merged in the branch that we created into the develop branch. And now if we go into GitHub and refresh. Should be somewhere in here. You can see that a minute ago, we made a change to the Hello World class. And if I see the history, let me choose this one. You see it went from Hello World to now the Hello Trailblazers message. And that's now in your repository. If you ever want to go back to the old Hello World message, then you could just revert back whenever you like. Oh. 
All right, so um, that's our presentation, but uh, we demonstrated how to create a Git repository, create a branch, we committed changes, and we pushed to a, a remote repository in GitHub. Um, if you take anything away from this, it should be these six Git commands. Git init, which creates a new repository. Git status, which sees any changes. Uh, Git add, that stages the changes, getting them ready to commit to your, your computer. Um, Git commit, which actually saves those changes onto your local machine. Git push, which sends those changes to GitHub. And Git checkout, which creates a new branch. And that's, that's so you can have uh, a more focused idea of what changes you've made recently. So that's why you want to create new branches. Um, we do have some additional resources. Um, this first trailhead guides you through creating a new repository. We didn't cover that in this session, but if you follow along this trailhead, it'll guide you step by step through how to create a new repository. After that, everything we showed you is what you need in order to save your code using Git. Um, the second trailhead involves uh, a more broader perspective of the entire software development life cycle and uses Git as a part of that. Um, be sure to check out the developer keynote. That is tomorrow yep. at 1. Tomorrow at 1. In this building. And uh, so we have a couple minutes left. If anybody has any questions, happy to take them. Uh, if not, thanks, everybody, for coming. <laughs>